What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So first of all, I apologize for the mess. I'm in the middle of making a whole bunch of projects for my upcoming restock. So I'm in the middle of cutting a whole bunch of glass, but I forgot to make an intro and an outro to this video. So let's just quickly talk about what we're going to be doing. So if you haven't been following along, I started a series on my channel making some projects out of these random stained glass books that I found on Amazon. And the next most requested piece to make is this pretty little, almost lampshade looking sun catcher. And I'm so glad I did. I'm so happy with how it came out. Super, super pretty. It looks so good in the sun. But I will link these books down below. So if you're new here and you wanna get these books and make these pieces alongside with me, you can definitely do that. But today's project, is going to be out of this book the 40 great stained glass project so if that sounds like something you guys are into don't forget to subscribe and let's get started Alrighty, guys so before we get started let's just open up our book and take a look at all of the materials we are going to need because when you open it up to project 2 the teardrop bevel hanger page 19 the materials list is quite short so it says we need five two and a half inch teardrop bevels, which we're not gonna need bevels because we're gonna be cutting our own out of any glass we wanna use. It says a crystal to hang inside and a small piece of box chain. So <laughs> I get that that is the basic materials list, but these are all of the materials you're going to need if you want to make this stained glass project. So let's put the book to the side for a second. And if you guys want to write down this material list, if you guys are going to make this too and you're new into stained glass, you're most likely not going to have all this stuff. So let's go over everything. Number one, you're going to need your stencil. So the stencils in the back of the book this time are luckily true to size. So you can cut that page right out, laminate it if you want to, and use that exact size stencil. So obviously we're going to need our stencil. Then you're going to need whatever glass you want to use. So if you want to use those correct size bevels, you can absolutely do that. If you don't want to use an actual bevel, you can pick any glass you want. I will say picking the glass, I went back and forth to the window because these particular crystal sun catchers don't reflect a lot of light. So adding another piece of glass in between the crystal sun catcher and the sun, I knew it wasn't going to reflect as well. So maybe take that in con into consideration as you're picking your glass, take it over to the window, make sure it still lets enough light through it. If you're really concentrated on this particular crystal teardrop, throwing lots of rainbows. If you use something like this, an iridescent clear glass, this itself is going to throw a lot of rainbows across the room. So you don't have to worry about it too much, but just pay attention to what glass you pick according to what the exact look you're going for is for the end result. You're going to need your crystal teardrop shaped sun catcher. Obviously you're going to need solder. I'm just going to use 6040 solder for this entire project. You are going to need 18 or 20 gauge wire. You can use silver or black. I'm going to use this because I'm just going to patina it. Then you're going to need chain. Again, you can use silver or black depending on if you're just going to leave it silver or patina it. You're also going to need electrical tape because electrical tape is going to be our rig that holds our glass together as we're putting it together. Then you're going to need pointed wire cutters. Then you're going to obviously need wire cutters, scissors, your soldering iron, of course I'm using the Hacko FX601, your flux, and patina if you're gonna use it. So those are all of the materials you're actually going to need if you wanna make this project. So with all that being said, let's get started. I'm gonna get all of this stuff out of the way. I've already traced out my stencil on my glass, so all we gotta do is cut it out, clean it up, and wrap it in foil. Thank you. 
Okay, so because the book is based off of using beveled glass, it doesn't say any specifics on cutting the glass or grinding it. And because these shapes are so perfect, they're even, they're all the same shape, I'm just gonna use this carbide stone to hand grind all of these edges before we wrap them in foil. So I've got my cup of water right here because you wanna do this while it's wet. So I'm just going to dip the carbide stone in it and just run it along all of these edges. Okay, so now that I'm done hand grinding all of these, you guys know that you cannot take it directly to the sink, so it's gonna go into my glass bucket first. So here is my glass bucket with some clean water in it, and we are going to rinse all of these pieces off before we take it to the art sink and give it a final extra clean rinse. Then once we're done with that, we can foil them up with copper foil. Alrighty guys, all my pieces are nice and clean, so I'm just going to wrap them in 732 black backed copper foil. You can use 732 or a half inch, obviously it depends on what size glass you're really working with, but whatever suits you best. Alrighty guys, all of our pieces are finished. They are wrapped in copper foil, so we are just about ready to get this thing going. So we've gotta grab our electrical tape since that's what we're gonna to use to rig it together. We've gotta to get our soldering iron and all of that stuff ready, and we will get to putting this piece together. Alrighty guys, now that we've got our glass or bevels, whatever you're using, ready and foiled, we can now open the book back up and really get to step one. So step one, it says with the flat sides down, fan out the foiled bevels, allowing a 1 16th inch space between them. Bend two pieces of plastic electrical tape around the bevels, taking care to maintain that 1 16th inch spacing. The first piece goes around the top and the second goes near the points. Pro tip. Note in the above photos that the tabs of tape extend over the edge on the left side and not on the right. You will see why in the next step. Let's set up our glass. So we are going to do just that. And it says we are taking good care to maintain that spacing. Now I imagine that spacing is there. So when we bend this piece together, the edges are going to sit corner to corner because if we put it right up against itself and taped it down, it's not going to bend. Make sure your foil is pushed down, burnished well, because if these top corner points are not perfectly flat, like mine just wasn't, it's going to make too much of a space. So I'm just laying all of these pieces down, leaving that little 1 18th inch space between each one. All right. Now let's take a look back at the picture just so we can really eyeball and make sure that what we've got here looks just like the picture. Like we've got pretty good size open space in the center and that's looking just about right. It seems like we don't want our points to be touching together. We want to leave that little bit of space in the center. So don't push all of these points next to each other. We wanna leave a little bit of space everywhere. So now it wants us to lay our electrical tape out. This is the part I'm nervous for. I'm not really good at making stained glass rigs like this. So at the end of this tape, I'm going to fold over just a tiny little tab right there. That way when we go to pull the tape off, I have a little tab to pull it up from to just make it a little bit easier. So keeping that in mind, we are really going to leave a good size edge over the left side like it says to. So I'm just gonna cut a big piece here just so I'm not holding that roll. And it says to put one down near the bottom. And again, we're taking care. We don't want any hanging over the right side. And we're paying extra attention to make sure we keep that 1 18th inch spacing between every piece of glass. If you move it, you gotta pull it up and do it again. Alrighty, so we got our rig set up good here. This tape is stuck down very well. Now it's all moving as one cohesive piece. So let's look at our next step here. 
from the opening near the fourth and fifth bevels, lift the taped unit and bend the two ends until they meet each other. Connect the tape ends with the two tabs of excess tape. Make sure that the inside edges of the adjacent bevels are even with each other. Then tack solder the two bevels together near the top and the bottom. Repeat for the remaining bevels. All right, so now we've got to try to pick this thing up and move it together, making sure everything is sitting nice and even. And we're going to lay that excess tape over the edge to hold it in place. So we're just gonna spin our thing around here very gently to make sure that everything is even. You don't want this thing to look wonky when you're done with it. I think that's looking pretty good, you guys. So this is what you should be looking at, something like this. And it's pretty sturdy, held together well because that electrical tape is strong. Alrighty, all of our points are touching the table. Okay, so now we're at the point where let's turn on our soldering iron, dampen your sponge, get your tip cleaner, whatever it is you're gonna use, get your flux ready, and let's start tack soldering this thing into place. Alrighty guys, so I've got my tip cleaner from Hacko, I've got my soldering iron heating up, my flux is ready to go. So pretty simple. All we're doing is just tack soldering all of these bevels or all of our pieces of glass at the top and at the bottom of each piece. Alrighty, so this is tack soldered in place pretty well. I did more than just a little bit of a tack solder. So on one of my edges, it looks like it's uneven, but in actuality, because this is a water glass, this glass thickness gets larger at the very tip of this glass. So it's actually not uneven, it's just a little bit thicker, which threw the des design off a little bit, but it's totally fine. It sits together perfectly regardless and looks great. So obviously when we were tack soldering that, we were avoiding the very point since that's where we're going to stick our wire through that hangs our teardrop. So I've left that space open. Let's read the next step. Installing the hanger. Cut a three inch piece of 18 gauge wire and make a quarter inch loop on one end. Insert a one inch piece of box chain through the loop. So now, is where we're making our wire loop and it wants us to make roughly a quarter inch loop which is a good size loop alrighty so this is looking like the perfect size right about here this is just a paintbrush and I'm gonna use this as my gauge to make that quarter inch loop so I'm just gonna hold it tight up against that and wrap the wire around that section of the paintbrush to make that loop then you can just pull it out and cut off the excess. All right, so we've got our loop here. Now we're gonna bend it a little bit down and it says it wants this to be three inches long. Then it said to insert a one inch piece of box chain through the loop and we're gonna insert it through that loop. So because that loop is still quite open, I'm going to use my smaller pliers and just close that loop up nice and tight so that chain never comes undone. Doesn't matter if it's a little bent, nobody's gonna see it anyway. Now it says, insert the wire through the top of the bevel assembly and pull snugly so the loop is against the inside of the cone. Solder the wire from the outside and cut it off flush. So it's telling us to go from the inside, insert our wire up through the center. So I've flipped it upside down. I've got the chain and the loop in my hand and we're going to insert that loop through the top and now we're going to solder that in place. So we're gonna hold it tight up against the top of our assembly and we're gonna solder that wire right into place. Alrighty. So we've cut off that excess wire. Now our chain is very well held on the inside of our piece. So it says solder the wire from the outside, cut it off flush, we've done that. Now it says lay the unit down flat on your work surface and solder all of the inside seams. 
Then remove the tape on the outside and solder the outside seams using support. Now all we're doing is soldering all of our inside seams. Now, why do they have you attach this before you solder your inside seams? That should have been done first, leaving that hole open at the top because now we have to work around this chain the entire time we're soldering these inside seams, which is super annoying. Beautiful. That is looking great, you guys. You see how nice and even and round those soldered beads are on the inside. We want it to look just as beautiful as it is going to look on the outside. So now we can gently remove this electrical tape and we're gonna do the same thing for the outside. Alrighty guys, so we've got our entire piece soldered all the way down to the very bottom edges. I built up a bead on the inside as well as the outside so they both look just as good. The last step we gotta do here is attach our jump loop and our chain to the top. Now, you'll be able to tell as soon as you build this piece that it's got a little bit of weight to it so you don't wanna use no baby chain, you don't wanna use no baby jump loop so I'm gonna get a good size jump loop and good size chain to attach to the top of this. Probably gonna go with maybe a nine millimeter and I'll show you what size chain, I'm not sure yet. Okay, so I am just gonna use the same size chain that I used on the inside, that way it completely matches. And I just am going to use a single strand, that way it can spin more freely versus if you were to double the chain up like that. So I've got two jump loops, same size chain, and I'm just going to attach this jump loop to the very top of this piece, but first I'm gonna put my chain onto the jump loop. Make sure your opening to the jump loop is at the bottom because you want to solder the opening onto your piece. Get plenty of flux on that, plenty of flux on the tip. I'm going to bend that solder so it sits up on its own. I'm going to grab a nice big bead and encase the jump loop, just like that, easy peasy. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to build up the strength around this jump loop, that way I know it's not gonna go anywhere and it'll be nice and secure. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more flux down near the base and I'm just gonna hold it to the side and start building up that bead around the outside of the jump loop. Alrighty guys, so we have completely finished soldering. We've got our jump loop fully secured to the tip. We've got all of our chains on. So because I want to patina this piece, I'm going to take it to the sink, rinse it off with some nice warm soapy water, patina it, rinse it again, and then we can attach our crystal because I want to attach the crystal at the very end once our piece is nice and clean. Alrighty guys, our piece is clean. She is patinaed and it is looking so cool. I cannot wait to see when this thing is done sitting in the sun. But the last step we have is to attach our little prism to the inside of this chain. Now I would suggest or link these down below, but I don't recommend them. They're from Amazon. I think there was like 15 in the box and they barely emit any rainbows. I know that this stained glass is going to reflect more rainbows than this thing itself, but you can probably find some better ones on Amazon. But we've got to make a jump loop to attach inside this hole and then attached to our chain. So we're going to have to use that same wire and we're gonna have to make some type of loop here. So how big are we looking? So I'm just kind of getting an idea for how big the jump loop would have to be to comfortably sit inside there. All right, so I'm just gonna make that little teardrop shaped jump loop so it just fits perfectly on this prism itself. So I've just rounded off one edge fit it through that prism. Now I'm gonna cut myself plenty of slack and then I'm gonna make another jump loop on the other end. And then that jump loop we can attach to our chain. All right, and now that the chain is on that loop, I'm just gonna close off this loop as best I can. So I'm gonna make it nice and tight, that way that chain doesn't ever come out. 
Alrighty, just like that. Now the last step is patinaing this metal. Hopefully it doesn't stain my prism. I should have done that first, but let me patina that real quick and then I will show you guys what the final result looks like inside a window with some sun coming through it. Alrighty guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm so, so happy with how this piece turned out. I think it's so pretty. And as always, it's so hard to capture anything on camera, specifically iridescent glass. So hopefully just a little bit of its beauty transfers to the camera. It looks fantastic in person. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna link everything down below, just like these books. If you wanna check out my stained glass work and my stained glass business, that will be linked down below too. And if not, we'll see you next time. Bye.